ladies, this is Ruby Recusa, and as promised, I'm going to bring you today all about Vendor Events 101. What you need, how much you should spend, and what to expect at a vendor event, as well as what your goals should be when you're at a vendor event. First thing, when I do a vendor event, I always find out um, more or less what the attendance is, how much is it. My limit is no more than $50, and there's a reason for that. And two is, am I the only 31 vendor there as well? And if also, I also invite my team members to join me to see if they can, as well as get the opportunity to get some more contacts as well. Okay, so after I've booked the event, I've contacted the coordinator, uh, made my payment, this is what I do next. Next is what I do is I fill out a event tracking sheet. This tells me um, very simple, the coordinator, the email, phone number, um, the address, the event date. It also gives me the opportunity to tell how many mileage it is as well as how much as I spent. When it comes to vendor events, my goal is to spend as little as possible to, but to maximize a profit. My goal when I do vendor events is to also not so much sales, but to get those bookings as well as the recruit. I recently did a vendor event about two weeks ago and was able to get two bookings as well as a potential recruit. So as long as you focus on that, you don't have to essentially worry about the sales. Those will come when you get those contacts. Next, um, with 31, with our company, when you spend at least $50 or more for a vendor event, you can put in a trade, um, a trade show request catalog form. They do have these in TOTS. And all you do is simply fill it out, scan it if you can, or email it, and they will send you the option, your choice, of either free catalogs or free mini catalogs. So again, as soon as I do that, I turn that in as soon as possible, and then within a week or two, I should be able to get those catalogs. After that step, when it comes to the actual vendor vet, when I prep, I have, I'm all about keeping it simple, so I'm gonna just keep it simple. I pack hostess packets, recruit packets, and in order to get those contacts, I always have a door price. My door price that I always have is something as simple as a thermal tote. You'll be surprised at how many um, contacts you'll get just by um, showing them that you have a thermal tote. So when you show them the thermal tote or even a picture of it as well, then, they'll, then they will eventually want to sign up for the door prize and that's how you get your contacts as well and your leads. This is a very simple door price slip. It asks them for their name, their email, their address, their phone number, their birthday, and again, do they want to host a party? Do they want to purchase interest in the specials? Or do they want to earn that extra income? Or even fundraisers as well. Um, so again, I make sure I have plenty of these on hand and have pens ready at the booth um, as well. Next, another sheet that I make sure I have with me all times within my business binder is I have a giveaway tracker. Since, since at every vendor event I do so like giveaway, I write down, of course, who the customer was. The customer, I don't find out who it is until after I am done um, drawing the name and contacting that person 48, after, 48 hours after the event. The item which is more likely a thermal tilt by specific as to what the pattern was, and of course the date as well. So again, all tracking for um, essentially taxing purposes, but as well as how much I'm spending as well. So again, vendor events, part one, just keep it simple, spend as little as possible to maximize um, your leads as well. And two, when you are focused, you can get those parties and get those recruits as well. It is possible. Just be confident, be you, and you will get those leads. And Friday, I will show you part two of vendor events. And I will see you then. Bye, ladies.